Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the Enforce Wild 2 WML. <sighs> it's no secret that I've had a love-hate relationship with Enforce products. Uh, the QC historically hasn't been consistent enough for me to trust it or necessarily recommend it, other than some very niche needs, like some of their um, their rifle-centric lights work really well as admin helmet lights. They have a flip switch IR, that's really cool. When it came to handgun lights, I usually would steer people, if they were looking for a budget-minded light, away from Enforce and towards another brand that had comparable prices with a more reliable track record for quality control. Uh, switching problems, the electronic switching problems, failing a parasitic battery drain, and the bodies being polymer versus a uh, metal, which I think weapon-mounted lights should be made out of metal whenever possible, which is pretty much forever and, and always because metal exists. Uh, that being said, I'm always willing to take another look at a product. When they released the Wild 2 with the aluminum body, I was intrigued. Not only for the overall footprint and size, but the uh, quoted output lumen output was quoted at 1,000 lumens, and of course the 6061 aluminum body. Although it did seem to retain some of the APC type features coming over, like the electronic press in switches versus a toggle switch or an up down or something like that. But I was gonna go ahead and get one. Now, I purchased my first uh, Enforce Wild 2 Lite when they literally just came out. I ordered it off the Enforce website, it came in, and I started my 2000 round review process, which turned into less a review and more of a saga, like a Romanov era saga of heartbreak, disappointment, success, disappointment again, uh, and ultimately a final conclusion, which we'll get to. As far as features go, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got the manufacturer's uh, quoted specifications as far as performance goes. It's got a thumb screw mount and it's got the electronic ambi switches, which are press in, hold down for momentary, tap on. Doesn't get much simpler than that as far as switching goes. Uh, my personal preference, I don't really care for the press in to activate switching system, no matter how big the paddles are. I prefer an up or down manipulation, but that's preference. I also don't like electronic switches. Also, preference. I like pressure to relieve momentary, not an actual programming uh, bit of code to handle that for me. But again, that's absolutely preference. First slide I got, I mounted on the gun and I started the 2000 round review process. First 500 rounds shooting it in varied lighting conditions with uh, photonic barriers. I want to see not only how much light the, how much output the light has, but how much candela it has in order to punch through those photonic barriers that we can and will encounter in more urban environments with a lot of light pollution. To the credit of the light, it, it performs pretty well for the price point for the footprint. It's not the most impressive handgun light I've ever seen, but this isn't a comparison. So for, for a lot of specific needs, it would definitely fill the role of a closer distance handgun light, which handguns by nature are closer distance. But I was gonna be checking the durability, not only from recoil, which is obviously it's gonna experience recoil more than it is anything else, working it in out of holsters, both concealment and duty carry, uh, I have a, I actually have a modified Sfarland 6354 that will fit Enforce lights uh, pretty easily, uh, but that did take some heat gun and some patience to make that happen. It's not a readily accessible option, but you can make one yourself with just a little bit of, on a scale of one to 10, it's a craft level two. Uh, so if you feel handy, a two level handy, you can definitely make it happen yourself. I was also gonna be including drop testing because that's something I do uh, with all weapon lights. Some people might ask, well, why would you drop test a weapon light? because impacts happen. Um, I've seen weapon lights, literally the screw came loose while the student was shooting and the light fell off the gun and hit concrete and stopped working permanently. And you might be like, well, preventive maintenance will prevent that. And I'm like, yeah, but accidents do happen. And, and you could call that negligence if you want to, but repeated draw strokes during a class environment when you're not paying attention to your weapon-mounted light, meaning it's a daytime class, you may forget to occasionally check the screw tension on your weapon light coming in and out of the holster. And some lights are notorious for loosening up with draw strokes out of duty holsters and even concealment holsters. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do drop tests. And that's why I broke my first light. So after that first drop test, uh, light number one stopped working. So I went and bought a second light and started the review process over. 
And you might be like, well, you've never done that before. That's where you're wrong. I do it quite frequently. Uh, if, you, if you look at some of the optic reviews I've done, I've taken multiple looks at the same type of optics that have failed just to get a sample size. Uh, not everything makes it to video, uh, but I do continue testing just for my own personal edification, be able to recommend or steer people away from products. And because I'd been so critical of Enforce in the past, I wanted to give them a fair shake with this newest generation of light. So I went ahead and got a second light and started, like I said, the 2000 round review process all over again, working it into my normal every day or every night, if you will, practice. Not only did the light ride the gun permanently, but I used it as much as possible in low light environments to get a really good feel for its overall performance, getting through that. Then I got to my second drop test on the set, or the first drop test on the second light, so we're at 500 rounds again. Then of course that brings us to the burn down, which is 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if any issues arise with that accelerated rate of fire that you wouldn't notice with the same round count over a much longer period of time. So 500 rounds in five minutes versus 500 rounds in five days, five weeks, five months, five years, hopefully not five years, I hope you shoot more now. Here's your burn down. No issues, no flickering, no battery timing, no no problems. Uh, to, to my eye, everything functioned exactly as it was supposed to. Um, the light didn't e experience a great, and of course it's mounted on the dust cover, which is well below the heat that you're gonna generate on a handgun, even with that round count in that short period of time. So I wasn't expecting any serious issues, but I did tighten it down um, to a reasonable amount of torque and it didn't loosen up. That's also another big thing that I'm looking for. And it, it just performed. And the next thousand rounds again was just working the light um, through my my practice that I'm gonna do wet mounted lights, low light practice, no light practice, things like that. Uh, I did have some delays uh, in between twips to the, trips to the range, twips, trips to the range because I was teaching. So I'd you know, fly out on a Monday, fly back on a Thursday. The next week, say Monday or Tuesday, I'd make it out to the range in the evening, shoot through the daytime, into sunset, into the night. What I noticed is if I left this light alone for more than three or four days, the batteries would die. First time I was like, okay, fluke, no big deal. So I bought a second, technically a third Enforce light to see if it was also experiencing parasitic battery drain. They both were. I'd get three, four, five, maybe six days out of a set of batteries with the light left in the safe or otherwise stored. I can't really describe just how annoying that is to be gone for a week, come back and have your weapon light dead. Now consider the implication of that from a duty carrier concealed carrier's perspective. You expect your light to uh, at least maintain its battery um, until you've you know, used them. Uh, my personal rule is if I use my weapon light for any period of time during a training session, say four or five hours, uh, the run time's usually right around an hour and change constant on, depending on which light brand we're talking about. So if that happens, I'm just gonna replace the batteries anyway. So this gun was going back into the safe with fresh batteries in it because I'd used it previously. And when I'd pull it back out to go to the range, it was dead. I spoke with an Enforce rep and they sent me out a replacement. So this would be my fourth Enforce Wild 2. Uh, and this one, to their credit, does not have the parasitic battery drain. Because I was experiencing um, reliability problems and confidence problems in the product and inconsistency from light to light to light to light to light. Um, I went ahead and started over again. Now, this all happened over uh, almost a year ago. Actually, over a year ago. Uh, just over a year ago when I f got my final Enforce Wild 2 light. The one that fixed the parasitic battery drain issue. And I put that through the entire review process, again, including all the drop tests. It passed four drop tests and it just stayed on the gun. Uh, I used it extensively. Whenever I'd go to the range, it would just stay in the range bag and I got my little notebook that I keep round counts in and I'd pull it out in a low light environment or even during the day and I'd put you know two, three mags through it, write the number down, keep it going. So at, right now, the, the light that's actually mounted on this gun, that's the, the final one that I got. Um, I got I got some other ones for sale. Uh, they probably need to be sent in and fixed if you want them. Um, 
This one has just shy of 5,000 rounds on it, which is not a significant round count over the lifespan uh, you'd expect from a web mounted light, but it's more than you're gonna get from my usual 2,000 round review process. Uh, a little bit of an exception to the rule, because usually I do 2,000 rounds. If it passes, it passes, if it fails, it fails. Or if it doesn't make it to 2,000 rounds, you get your video then, and you know when you, when the, you get the notification, the video's only four minutes, you're like, uh-oh, something didn't do well. But I felt like I would do my due diligence on this one because <laughs> the, well, it kind of kills possible arguments to sample size of one. Sample size of four is still a very small sample size, but it took four tries for me to get it right, for me to get a light that functioned. Now, someone may say, well, maybe N4 sent you a cherry-picked model. Maybe they did. I don't think so. I wouldn't believe that they would do that because this was coming from the rep, not from the company. Uh, and I don't know of any way that the rep would possibly know which light was going to be cherry-picked versus someone at the factory be like, build this one great, when they should build them all great. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I've seen these lights pop up in classes over, the, over this time, and I haven't heard anyone recently talk about parasitic battery drain, but I know quite a few people that I spoke with six, seven, eight months ago who were having that exact same problem. Um, this one's good to go. Light output is, it's okay. Uh, it's not the greatest thousand lumen handgun light. It's not the greatest for lumen output. It's not the greatest for beam, not the greatest for temp, not the greatest for candela. But it is a, in its price point, it's a reasonable light. If you're budget-minded, this isn't a bad pick for a concealed carry or a nightstand gun. If you can save up a little bit more money, I would get something else. Uh, I think that Enforce is getting closer to producing that quality light that some people uh, really hope that they're able to put out there, and some people already believe that they do. Uh, everything's based on premise. How much do you shoot? How much do you do actual low light stuff? How much do you actually utilize your equipment? If you only shoot a pedestrian amount of rounds a year, you know, three, four hundred rounds a year, and you've taken a night class like six years ago, I don't really value that opinion on weapon mounted lights as much as I do somebody who takes two or three weapon mounted lights, low light, no light centric classes a year, and also shoots low light whenever they can. Um, if you want to shoot low light and you can't, it's still kind of the same conversation. Uh, playing with something in your bedroom is quite different than getting it on the range and putting it to work in realistic light settings. So, I think that this is a definite leap forward for Enforce, but it's certainly not the kind of performance I was hoping for. That being said, like I said, if you're budget-minded, this isn't a terrible light. There are definitely worse choices out there. I'm Eric Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.